Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Akash Shetty from CS Agri Medical Academy. I'll be presenting a paper titled "Unveiling the MRI Insights: Assessing Posterior Lateral and Posterior Medial Corner Injuries" under the guidance of Dr. Amrit Thakur. Coming to the introduction, injuries to posterior medial and posterior lateral corner of the knee represent a significant challenge in orthopedic practice, particularly in the context of multi-ligamentous knee injuries. Despite their clinical importance, these injuries are prone to being overlooked in uh, imaging studies, leading to potential delays in diagnosis and treatment initiation. Of particular concern is the posterior lateral corner, which can pose diagnostic challenges, especially when part of broader multi-ligamentous injury, often associated with anti-tissue ligament tears. Now, coming to the brief anatomy, the posterior lateral corner is made up of lateral collateral ligament, popliteal myotendinous complex. arcuate ligament iliotibial band biceps femoris tendon and popliteal fibular ligament whereas the posterior medial corner is made up of posterior oblique ligament oblique popliteal ligament posterior horn of the medial meniscus and medial collateral ligament these structures collectively provide stability to the knee joint resisting varus and external rotational forces in the posterior lateral corner and valgus and internal rotation forces in the posterior medial corner Failure to recognize and address these injuries promptly can disrupt knee biomechanics, delay repair, and predispose patients to osteoarthritis. The aims and objectives are to see the role of MRI in ascertaining the prevalence and characterize the most frequent types of injuries in posterior lateral and posterior medial corners of the knee. The objectives are to identify the location of injury and assess the frequency of occurrence across different structures within the posterior lateral and posterior medial corners, and establishing correlations between various patterns of injuries commonly seen in these areas. Next is the research methodology. This is a retrospective study conducted in the Department of Radio Diagnosis and Justice Case at the Hospital in Mangalore on patients who are referred for knee joint injury. Our informed consent was taken from all these patients. Uh, patients were examined in supine position, ensuring the knees were positioned within the extremity coil and supported by foam pads to maintain proper alignment. Uh, the sample size was 50, where patients were evaluated with Siemens Magnetom Avanta 1.5 Tesla using standard protocols. It was a, a retrospective descriptive study uh, for the duration of two months. The inclusion criteria. For the study, was all the patients referred with history of knee injury, and the exclusion criteria was any patient uh, who had any contraindications to MRI. And to the image gallery, the first image on the left is a proton density fat that has been imaged, showing tear of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. As the image on the right is a proton density fat that has been imaged, showing tear in the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. Next is the Uh, the image on the left is a proton density fat site coronal image showing medial collateral ligament tear. The image on the right is a proton density coronal image showing lateral collateral ligament tear. The image on the left is a proton density fat site axial image showing partial tear of the medial retinaculum and medial patellofemoral ligament. Whereas the image on the right is a proton density fat site axial image. Showing signal changes in the popliteal muscle. Uh, now the image on the left is a proton density fat that's actually limited, showing a uh, complete tear of the uh, ACL. So the image on the right is a proton density fat that's actually limited, showing complete tear of the PCL. Coming to the observation and results, based on the findings of a study involving 50 cases, it was determined that 23 cases exhibited injuries in the posterior lateral corner. While 39 cases presented with injuries in the posterior medial corner, of which 15 patients had both posterior medial and posterior lateral corner injuries. Among the observed cases, four of the patients had injuries to ACL or PCL, with four of these patients having injuries to both ACL and PCL simultaneously. 14 patients presented with concurrent fractures. There were 10 cases where posterior medial corner injuries were coupled with fractures. Compared to six cases where posterior lateral corner injuries were associated with fractures, four cases with fractures had injuries in both posterior medial and posterior lateral corners concurrently. So among the third nine cases presenting with posterior medial corner injuries, all of them had involvement of the posterior horn of medial meniscus. 
25% had involvement of the medial collateral ligament, 15% had involvement of the posterior oblique ligament, and 10% had involvement of the oblique popliteal ligament. Of the 23 cases presenting with posterior lateral corner injuries, 39% had involvement of the lateral collateral ligament, 34% had involvement of the popliteal myotendinous complex and the popliteal fibular ligament each, 30% had involvement of arcuate ligament, 26% had involvement of iliotibial band, and 17% had involvement of the bicep femoris tendon. Now, out of the 14 patients are presenting with concomitant fractures, 21% had fractures of the medial and lateral tibial plateaus each, 14% had fracture of the tibial eminence, anterior lateral and posterior lateral femoral condyle each, and 7% had fractures of anterior medial and posterior medial femoral condyle each. Uh, from this summary, the posterior lateral and posterior medial corners of the knee present unique challenges in musculoskeletal imaging. MRI is commonly preferred for its ability to assess soft tissue structures effectively. Understanding the intricate anatomy of these regions is essential for accurate interpretation. As, in, as misinterpretation can have significant consequences such as chronic instability or failed reconstruction. Therefore, a thorough MRI evaluation is crucial for guiding clinical or surgical decisions and ultimately uh, improving patient outcomes. So, these are my references. Thank you.